Hello and welcome to our videos for the Online Academy and where we'll cover the basic skills for playing the marimba or the xylophone. We're going to do five of these basic keyboard videos in which we'll cover sight reading and then scales, arpeggios, some stroke ideas, how to play the instrument, um, scales, arpeggios, double stops, rolls, and skills that all the beginning keyboard players um, need to know. If you're brand new to the keyboard, this is exactly where you want to start. If you have some keyboard experience, it's always good to review uh, some of these skills. I may present these skills in a different way than you've heard them, so it's always good to have uh, another way to consider doing things. Today's video is going to um, talk just solely about sight reading. It's a very important aspect of playing the keyboard, and most percussionists and drummers come to this instrument not very comfortable with reading treble clef or bass clef, let alone the other clefs. I usually start all of my, my instrument videos and, and presentations with the universal percussion principles. There's four of those principles. I tend to talk about them on all the instruments, and those four principles are grip, lever, playing spot, and stroke. And those are the four areas that I always like to identify before I start playing this instrument. Um, we'll get to those a little bit later um, because I really just want to talk about sight reading in, in today's video. So a couple of things, sight reading. Um, I think most students are really intimidating, intimidated when they look at the music and we've got staffs and spaces and lines and ledger lines and all these things. Um, so you just have to really move forward and just do it. And I have some keys for you. Um, that I think if you follow these steps, it will, it will go very well. A um, couple of things when you're looking at sight reading. Um, sight reading is essentially you're playing a piece of music that you don't know. And to get good at sight reading, you should just play a piece once and then move on and not really come back and play that piece again because you're already slightly familiar with it. So to really focus in on that skill of immediately recognizing the notes, the spaces and the lines, just read a piece once. When you're gonna do the next one, turn the page and then read that piece. Um, don't keep reading the piece over and over again because then you start memorizing it and you're not really sight reading it anymore. You wanna start with music that is very easy. I think the best thing to do is to find either music for the flute or the violin or even easy piano music, and you can read the top line, the treble clef of the piano music. Very easy to do. There are a number of online resources um, to create your own sight reading. You can tell them what key, what time signature, and how long the piece is. So a lot of options that you have online, but the, the key thing is to play music that is very, very easy. Okay. So once you've found something that's easy, here are the steps that you want to go through to sight read. And the first one is something that percussionists and drummers always forget about, and that's to identify the key in which you're going to play. You know, when we come up to the drum set and the snare drum and a lot of our other percussion instruments, there is no key signature telling us well, one sharp, so we're in G major, or two flats, we're in B flat major. So we've kind of conditioned ourselves to not look for the key. And we have to kind of recondition ourselves to always assume um, that there's a key signature. So when I come to the, the, the marimba here to sight read something, and, and on the stand here, I've just chosen one of my favorite sets of music, the, the J.S. Bach Sonatas and Partitas. And I've picked a page that I actually don't know very well at all. There are no sharps and flats, and in this case, it's in C major. So now the, the most, most important reason that, that I've identified the key, that now tells me which group of notes I'll be playing. Since there are no sharps and flats, I will totally eliminate thinking that I'm going to play any of the accidentals, the sharps or flats. So it's really reduced what I have to worry about is now just a C major scale. And of course, we'll break down the scales um, in a later video. So I've started with the key. The next thing to identify is the range that this piece 
um, is written in. The, how many notes do I have to cover? And I want to make sure that I'm standing in the center of that range because I want to avoid, if I start here and I have a note that's lower or higher on the instrument, I'm not ready to get to that. We have a, a wide instrument that we have to think about playing. So in looking at my piece, my highest note seems to be the B flat right here. And my lowest note looks like a G. So I'm going to put my music in the middle of that range. And now I'm set to play this instrument. Some sight reading may be way down here. Other sight reading might be right up here. But identify the range of your piece. And that will get us started for that. So we've thought about the key. We've thought about the range. Then the next thing to get ready to sight read is to look through the piece and find the hardest parts of the piece that are likely to trip you up. So I see some large intervals here between the left hand and the right hand, and then they switch. And the reason I want to find the hardest part of the piece is that will give me an idea on what tempo I should pick. So often we, we pick a tempo that we can play the first measure of the piece, and ultimately that tempo was too fast to execute something a little bit later in the piece. So I've identified uh, where the difficult parts are. Um, now, the thing I really want to do here in, in sight reading is I'm not going to look at the keyboard. And I know this is one of the hardest things to do um, with the percussionist. And it's very important, and I'm just going to go to the drum pad here for a second. Um, a skill you should have already developed on the drum pad is the ability to have great control over your playing spot. And I can keep my sticks very close to each other, and I know exactly where they're going to strike the instrument. My sticks don't just on their own move all over the drum. And the reason that's important, I now have to have very good control on where I'm going to strike the stick. If I'm going to try to hit the C, I have to have very good control with both hands that I will strike the C every time. So you should have already done some work developing your playing spot on the drum pad, on the snare drum, on all of your instruments really, because now the, the playing spots are very small. If you think about the, the higher notes on this instrument, that note is not quite an inch and a half wide, and I really just don't want to miss my playing spot. So that's a, that's a skill you'll develop quite a bit. So I'm not going to look down while I play this. And, and, and now here's the, the trick to that. I've identified the range of my piece, and I will use the accidentals in my peripheral vision. So while I'm looking at the music, I've placed my music stand nice and low. So when I'm looking at the music, I can also see, I can see every accidental. There's the C sharp, the B flat, the A flat, the F sharp, the E flat, the D flat, or the C sharp. And I can see those notes while looking at the music. And if I can see those notes after learning how the keyboard is built, I know where the C is. If that's my B flat, I know the A is right there. So I'll use that peripheral vision while looking at the music and always following along with every note, I can still see the keyboard pretty well. Okay, the next thing I need to do is sing to myself mentally, say the notes, of the first two measures. So I'm gonna do that, I'll say it out loud. C, D, E, F, G, C, D, C, B, A, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, G, F, E, D, C. So I've already said the first two measures to myself in a nice, comfortable tempo that will allow me to play this piece very well. So those are the keys to good sight reading. I'll just go over that, that, that again. Identify the, the key signature so you know which notes you play and which notes you don't play. Identify the range of the piece. Look for the hardest parts. Use your peripheral vision while looking at the music because we really can't look from the instrument to the music back and forth. That's not really the way to learn to sight read. The way to learn to sight read is keep watching the music. Mentally sing the first two notes to yourself, first two measures to yourself, so you've set up a good tempo 
and that you're starting to become familiar with this piece. So I'll sight read this piece for you. I'm not looking down. played the first seven bars. I actually even missed a note, but I was willing to do that because I just really want to get better and better at looking at the music and still learning how to find these notes while I'm looking at the music and continuing to sharpen my mind at knowing how to read these notes. So those are some hints on sight reading.